what the heck am I doing here? Gatlinburg, Tennessee. There's generic tourist traps on every corner, a plenitude of American fast food joints for every palate. I might as well be on Las Vegas Boulevard. Don't worry, I'm not gonna Anthony Bourdain you and make you watch me eat a bunch of delicious food you can't taste. But if you know anything about me, you know I must have come here for a very good reason. Well, I'm here for the best light show in the US of A. No, it's not some obnoxious city-funded fireworks show. And it's not a high concentration of Christmas lights crammed into a residential block either. This is something only Mother Nature can do, and it's just a short 30-minute drive east of the Great Smoky Mountains. Smoky Mountains are a subdivision of the Appalachians with 187,000 acres of old growth and diverse temperate forests that get from 50 inches to 100 inches of rain, which make this climate a close relative to the rainforest we know. Not to mention its endless biodiversity by having the densest black bear population in the USA, the most diverse salamander population outside of the tropics, and that it's home to 10 bat species, including the endangered Indiana bat. Okay, don't get me wrong. It hasn't always been an easy road to survival for the Smokies. This place has been under attack by logging companies for decades, and believe me, they've done plenty of damage. But if it wasn't for the parks' high peaks and low valleys protecting all of its super dense, old growth forests, this place probably would have been mowed down in its entirety. But luckily that, in combination with grassroots efforts and recognition of its incredible biodiversity, the park has been preserved to what it is today. What happens here is so completely unusual and unique and special and even magical. And if you miss it, you can try and come back next year and catch it, but you may never see it again. Meet Wanda DeWard. She's lived in the area for quite some time and knows these mountains better than anyone. Well, if you like natural phenomena and you don't mind waiting in the dark, in the woods at night, and watching quietly, this might be the best place on Earth. Wanda promised to guide me to the best spots out there so I can check these guys out, but I realized quickly we were not alone. Tourists. Tons of them. No, 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 no. This cannot. I guess if there's 1,500 people coming. Oh my god. Dude, we're dead. Josh, we have to try. It's okay. Dude, we can't try. They're gonna ruin our shot. We don't know that yet. And none of them could even take the shot anyways because none of their cameras even work in the dark. We're gonna walk away empty handed at this point. I don't know what we're gonna do. Maybe you wanted to get us in? I have no idea what we're gonna do. Unfortunately for me, this event has become quite popular. But luckily, Wanda is well connected and was able to get us through and out of the way of the tourist mess to a private viewing area. Okay, here's the thing. You could spend all day trying to plan these things, but there's always a curveball, always. And that's what makes me and my crew awesome right now is that we're small enough to roll with the punches and that's why we're the first to bring you these kinds of stories. No big production company can keep up. It's 9 p.m. and it looks like actually they're just getting started and pretty soon they're gonna start swarming in. And so all there is to do is wait. Look, right over there. It's amazing. That's it, that's it. This is what we came here for, and it's gonna be beautiful. But don't worry, this isn't one of those creepy, eerie UFO conspiracy documentaries. This is much more interesting. All this action in the sky boils down to one pretty incredible little creature. Meet park ranger Becky Nichols. She's the entomologist for the National Park Service and pretty much planet popularity this time of year, and a valuable and critical part of the conservation efforts here at the Smoky Mountains. Botinus carolinus is one of the world's most incredible bioluminescent fireflies, and the synchronous display is something unique because of the flash pattern. And during this time of year in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, they put on an amazing light show. Most fireflies don't do this. You heard the lady, synchronous fireflies. That's like fire in the sky. Actually, there's no fire in the sky at all in this equation. But if you just watch their fireworks show, you can tell these guys aren't any old East Coast firefly. They're flipping synchronous. But what does that mean to be synchronous firefly? Well, Photinus carolinus males all flash together around the same time, right? But then they go completely dark in unison. So that means they're synchronous in their darkness, not in their flashing. And most people don't know that. Pretty cool, right? 
The flash patterns are what the female and the male use to identify that they are communicating with their species. In the case of Potinus carolinus, the flying individuals are males. They're flashing to advertise their presence to females. The male flashes anywhere from four to eight flashes. The females will respond approximately four seconds after the last male flash with what we call a doublet flash. It's two extremely quick flashes, blink, blink. That doublet flash and the fact that it occurs at a specific timing relative to the male flash is the communication. The male sees that. The male now orients and starts to direct his, his behavior towards that female response. We think they are choosing to be synchronous for whatever reason. They blink almost together an average of six times. It's all the males that are flashing. And the thinking is that that stimulates the female to respond so they can find her. And then they stop. They stop all pretty much at the same time. And that's what synchronous is, the stop. That's just really unusual. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the one that predicts when the fireflies emerge. Yes. So how do you predict when fireflies are going to happen? Who knows that? How would anyone ever know that? Well, what I do is I put temperature loggers on site. They will record temperature every hour. And that goes into a formula to determine what the growing degree days are for that particular day. In other words, they need a certain amount of temperature accumulation before they will grow. And if you keep adding those numbers together over time, you'll, you can predict when pupation will occur and when the adult will emerge. So now that we understand their mating flashing patterns, I built this hand-triggered female firefly collar that matches the real size, color, and pattern of actual female Photinus carolinus fireflies, all in an effort to lure in a cloud of males and get in on all the action. I guess I'm lonely. Now I could put my female firefly light on the ground, but it's not nearly as much fun as putting it on the face. Okay, one, two, three, four. All we gotta do is keep this up and be patient. Was on the forehead. Okay, I had to take the trap off my face because these guys are terrible at landing. They'd land kind of on my nose and then spill into the hood of my jacket. The ladies in nature are on the ground and it makes sense why. Because these guys cannot land a plane to save their lives. And they're looking at my trap like men see Pamela Anderson in a bar. Like, baby, baby, where you been all my life? Look at that. After every flash they do, I count to four and I give them one little lady flash. Now the cool thing is, is I can't see them right now unless they're flashing, but you're looking at me through an infrared camera and you could see exactly what's going on. There's lots of little bugs all over my trap and they're trying to make babies. So far, mission accomplished. We know that that communication, that attraction of the male to the female is light. It's the light communication. And we can do that by replacing the female, for example, with a light emitting diode. The only thing that diode does is flash light, and it's as effective as a female for attracting the males. It's not pheromones, it's not sound, it's not some other sense. So it's light and light alone. The brightness of the flashing, the synchrony of the flashing, and the stop is what enables them to find her. Yeah. And that's really the best explanation we have. They're controlling the flash with their little brains. Their central nervous system, including their brain, is controlling the flash. They have these little light organs in their abdomen, but it doesn't happen unless they shoot some oxygen in there, and they have control of that. And so the thinking is, is that they choose to blink, and so they're controlling it. They can do other patterns or slow it down or cut it short, but they're identified by their flash pattern. That's one way that makes it easy to identify them. Well, we saw some the other day in a spider web, didn't we? Yes. and they were not flashing their regular flash pattern. pattern. They were in trouble. What we've seen in the past, once they're in that spider web and maybe the spider has injected them, they just glow. Somehow that glowing, they're not controlling it. They're probably perished already and, the, and that's just what's left behind is those chemicals somehow. And they're exposed to oxygen. Yeah, exposed to oxygen and they glow, yeah. 
they'll spend anywhere from a year to a couple of years as larvae and then they'll go into what's called the pupil form. Like caterpillar or butterfly? Same basic that. idea. So they spend most of their life as larva. Right, so they're gonna spend anywhere from a year to two years as larvae, two weeks to three weeks as adults. That's crazy, most people don't know that. The larval stage of the firefly is, is kind of uh, fierce looking though. He's, he's got six legs and mandibles that stick out in front and so they're pretty voracious little predators, so. How big are they? Uh, about an inch, inch and a half. Now an interesting thing about larval fireflies is larval fireflies don't flash, but they do glow. Pupa, which is that intermediate step between the larva and the adult, also glow. The purpose of that glow is to advertise the fact that they're poisonous. Don't eat me, I'm gonna make you sick. Fireflies were once in great abundance in these areas. And it takes forever, and by forever I mean like 15 billion flipping years for a species to evolve into something this brilliant. And unfortunately we wipe so many of them out overnight by carelessly contaminating our water, or how about aerial pesticide crop dusting, or maybe just not being mindful to control our own population. In the suburban areas, the firefly numbers seem to be declining, primarily due to light pollution and habitat destruction. They do require um, undisturbed forest floor for the larval stage and the light pollution as well. So the males can't find the females and reproduction can't occur. These animals are doing very complicated things. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Drosophila with a little, you know, or much, much smaller brain than a firefly, or if you're a vertebrate or a person, uh, there are complex behaviors and we just don't understand how they, how they happen. There's so much we don't know. That's the fun part is the mystery. What we don't know and how magical they are and how unexplained they are. It's, I think it's good to have a little mystery out there. You know, people need to have a little feeling of awe and wonder about life in general. I think that's why people come watch them, just because it's so fascinating. Fireflies are just one more really good reason to tread lightly on Mother Nature, so that we can protect our little fiery friends from extinction. Besides, these guys are nature's disco balls, which means their purpose in life is to make you and me dance. I'm Josh Garcia, and I'm asking you to get outside and trailblaze. You've only got two weeks left to live. Yeah. This is your only chance of scoring a babe. Don't screw it up. Come on, man, you can do this. Okay, I can do this. Yeah. Not dying a virgin. Not dying a virgin. Right. Four, three, two, one. Hey, baby. Well, hey there, fellas. <laughs> Honey, you are so not bright enough. Yeah, baby. I know you see this. Sorry, not my species. You're so pretty. Oh. Ew, are we even genetically related? Gross. Oh. Ooh, you are alive. Now that is what I'm talking about. To me? <laughs> what are you doing? Go get her! Go get her! Go get that! Nice clashing. 